Richard Pito, thank you for uh, giving us a, a, a view on the controversy surrounding breast cancer screening. Uh, you have, uh, have, have uh, calculated the vast improvement in outcomes for women with breast cancer, but particularly those with early diagnosis, and now the, um, the battle is raging about, okay, what's the best way to find women uh, early with breast cancer? Um, what's your take on the, on the issue of, uh, uh, of uh, screening? Well, I think there's two questions. By what proportion will screening reduce your mortality? Mm. And then what is the background mortality if you don't screen? And the question of what is the proportion by which screening will reduce your mortality, this, I think, will be answered by the collaborative meta-analysis of all the screening trials that has now been agreed to through the Early Breast Cancer Trials Collaborative that. Group. Yes, we're doing that. And, and that's going to be a big job, Richard. <laughs> all the trialists of the world have agreed to send us yeah. all their data, yeah. and we are going to make sure that this, collab this review is done collaboratively so that each feels that the other's methods and results are transparent. Yeah. So we want to make the results transparent. Having said that, we're going to give every collaborator a veto over any conclusions in the discussion. So the discussion will represent only those points which are agreed by all collaborators. And yeah. if any one collaborator objects to a conclusion in the discussion, it won't be there. So we're going to go for transparent data and then only those statements in the discussion that are agreed by everybody. And in exchange for that, we will produce transparent data for the whole world. And then that will be a better guide as to what the proportional reduction in those old trials was, sure. which in turn will give us some guide as to what the proportional reduction in future patients might be. So there's, there's a lot of extrapolation. We should not be in a position where we're arguing about what the old trials showed, and a year or two from now, we will not be in that position. Why are we arguing about what the old trials show? Um, I think it reflects partly changing standards as to how trials should be reported. I think some of the trials were actually done in ways that were probably objective and unbiased with respect to breast cancer mm -hmm. outcome but were reported in ways that by current standards of reporting would be regarded as suboptimal. And people who've just been looking at the reports in those trials have said, ah, this is a suboptimal study. But it's actually yeah. a suboptimal paper of what might have been a study which could have been reported satisfactorily. And I think right. that is what I'm hoping we'll find. And so the question then is, do you take all nine of these studies, a weighted average of all nine, after getting the details right on all of them, or do you take only those four which, in which the published paper seems to be reasonably satisfactory? And I, I think it would be better if we could take all nine because we don't have unlimited amounts of data. Yep. And of those four that were done, a lot were looking at studying women in their 40s. So sure. it, it, it's not really relevant to the, say, UK programme, which does screening between the age of 50 and the age of 70 in the hope of reducing breast cancer mortality between ages, say, about 55 and 79, yeah. there'll be a delay before you get benefit, but there'll also be some carryover benefit into your 70s. So I it's agree. 55 to yeah. 79 that we're trying to reduce. Yeah. So I think the minor source of disagreement, maybe twofold disagreement at most, is what do the old trials show? Yeah. And I think that will become clearer over the next year or two. Curiously, the major source of discrepancy between the estimates made by the UK programme and the estimates made by its critics it arises from applying whatever relative risk you've got to very different background rates. Right. Because in Britain, if you say, what's the probability of death between 55 and 79? Well, it's 2%. Sure. So what would it be if nobody had ever been screened? Would it be something over 2%, say 2.2%, 2.4%, I don't know. So that's the background rate. That's the background rate. And then by what fraction can we reduce it? Right. So you take that background. But many of the critics have actually taken a background rate of 0.3%. This being... Well, that's wildly out. Yes, it, it's, it's inappropriate if what you want to do is to know what a national screening programme can offer. And this is because a lot of the trials began among women in their early 40s or in their 40s and followed them for only a few years. And so they say, well, in the trials, if you look at 10-year mortality in the trials, but then it, it would suggest that 10-year mortality is only 0.3%. But you see, this is 10-year mortality at something like ages 45 to 54. Sure. That's irrelevant if we want to say, what are we going to do with the UK screening programme to breast cancer mortality at ages 55 to 79? Mm -hmm. The background should be 2 point something percent. And this discrepancy between um, you know, 
applying a relative risk to a background risk of 0.3% or applying a relative risk to a background risk of 2 point something percent, this produces a sevenfold discrepancy between Absolutely. the estimates. And I think in this case, if what we want to know is what will the UK, what would full compliance with the UK 20 year screening programme offer, yeah. then obviously the appropriate background risk is 2 point something percent. And this is just, it's, it's a really trivial point and it's been very much underemphasized, yeah. unfortunately. But, but, but the study you're doing... And this uh, has been the main source of the discrepancy of the between the estimates of benefit from the screening mm. programme and the estimates of benefit from their critics. The mm. critics say they're wrong by a factor of 10, and they're not. It is the critics that are wrong by a factor of something sure. like 10, sure. no, just for this rather elementary error. It's, it's uh, fundamentally important, in my view, that people understand that basic part of the methodology. Um, and the, I, I see this uh, study and this argument and this discussion, if you like, as being important, of course, for the UK policy. But it's important for every other health uh, department, <laughs> every government, yes. uh, who have got to put out money for uh, for mammographic screening. And yes. uh, and so we need to get this consensus. And as, as I see it, I mean, I'm a, a devoted advocate of the rules that you wrote on meta-analysis in 1983 or whenever it was. But I mean, you need to you need to get all the data if you possibly can. Yes, all if the you can get the nine yes. data, nine trials a week. Yeah, we get all the data you can, and then we'll agree as to what was the proportional reduction in those old trials, yeah. and we can make an informed guess as to what the proportional reduction will be in, from future screening programmes. Yeah. Whatever that proportional reduction is, though, we must apply it to the background risk at ages something like 55 to 79. Yeah. That's just elementary. When people start getting breast if, cancer. <laughs> well, but when, yeah, the chance of dying of breast cancer at 45 to 54 is about 0.3 percent in sure. Britain. The chance of dying from breast cancer at 55 to 79 it's is 2.0 percent yeah. and would be a bit higher without screening. Yes, and it's that something over 2 percent risk yeah. that screening is trying to reduce. Yeah. And so the claims that you can get a gain which is of the order of a few per thousand and the breast screening programme's estimate is of the order of five per thousand from 20 years of screening, which I think is, is reasonable. Mm -hmm. That's a reasonable claim and the, the criticism saying, no, no, if we take a background risk of 0.3% and we reduce it to 0.25%, then the absolute gain is 0.5 per thousand. Sure. Well, this is, it's, an, it's, an irrele it's irrelevant and sure. it's, ir it's a most peculiar aberration. Sure. It's answering the wrong question if what you want to know is what a national pr programme will offer women. Yeah. Have you got any uh, view on whether we might be moving to screen high-risk women? Should we ever be, f be able to find a good uh, genomic or proteomic test to, to, to sort out who amongst the population are going to be at highest risk? And then, you know, with the, the cuts in healthcare costs, uh, uh, I've no doubt that uh, the, when these political discussions happen, people look for the... Uh, a quick gain, and that's certainly not in prevention or screening. Um, and I see those budgets at risk, in, in not just in the UK, but uh, but further afield. Well, Did you see the, anything coming over the horizon which might think, oh, wow, we might be able to well, narrow we, the programme? If we take the breast screening programme's own estimates of the absolute benefit from the current screening programme of something of the order of five per thousand, mm those deaths would be mostly among women in their 60s and 70s. Yep. So on average, let's say, about 70 years old mm -hmm. when death is avoided. Um, and so they would have some years of good life, 10, yep. 15 years of good life perhaps, but less in some cases, more in others. Um, I mean, some deaths at age 60 will be avoided, but on the whole, we're talking about the avoidance of death in later middle okay. age yep. or early old age. And by current criteria, if you are getting a gain of five per thousand for the population as a whole from the screening invitations or from those who, who those who accept the invitation, then by a factor of three, that's worthwhile by current NHS criteria. So it does matter yeah. what the benefit is. Yeah. If the benefit were only a tenth as big, you know, if we don't notice this error in the population to which things are applied, then you'd say, well, it's not worthwhile. But if you actually ap apply the relative risks to a reasonable estimate of the background risk, then by current criteria it would be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And also it would be worth extending it to women who are at higher risk despite being a bit too young for yeah. normal screening. Yeah. But exactly which women, I don't yeah. know. I think no. the, the main question is what do we do for the population as a whole? As and a whole. The first thing we do is get the data straight. Thank you, Richard, very much indeed.